Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I just saw Annette's Makeup Corner put up this video, so of course I decided, hey, I want to make this tag video as well. It sounds like a fun one. So if you're interested in hearing my answers for not your basic booty guru tag video, just keep watching. Okay guys, these questions are kind of long, so hang in with me here. So the first question is, people tend to think beauty YouTubers are experts or should be at doing makeup. Of course, that's not always true. What is the one thing you struggle with doing? Side note, even if you are a pro MUA, I bet there's still things you struggle with, so please share. I think the stereotype is definitely that everyone that has a makeup channel should be good at makeup. I think though that as subscribers, what you need to realize is not every beauty channel is about doing your makeup, so you definitely want to subscribe to a variety of YouTubers. So for example, I feel like I'm more like a, here's how like a regular person would do their makeup type deal, you know? So I try to do the best I can. I feel like there's a hair on my lip. So I do my makeup on YouTube the way I would do it at home. Some days it's a little bit wild, but that's just me. That's who I am. But I wouldn't say like, oh my gosh, if you watch Karen Harris on YouTube, you're gonna be like the best makeup artist in the world or anything like that. So what I struggle to do with, I would say pretty much everything. Like I can't do, I mean, I've never really attempted like a cut crease. I don't do any like crazy contours. I can't do any like lip art. Um, I don't do Halloween makeup. Like the list is pretty extensive. So let's move on to question number two. Number two, on, the, on that note, are there any makeup techniques you'd like to improve or learn how to do? Um, not really, to be honest. I feel like I I do okay. I'm just, it's not anything right now, like, gun to my head. What would I like to do more of? I can't think of anything. I think it'd be fun to play with some of my hydro liners. I want to do that more because I haven't really um, played with them enough. But, yeah, I, I got nothing. Are there any makeup looks, styles, trends, or techniques you absolutely refuse to do or follow on yourself? I mean, I wouldn't refuse, you know, but I think that I find some things more interesting than others. I would never do like the squiggly brows or anything like that, but I mean, those are pretty gimmicky, right? So, but I love doing like wing eyeliner. I like doing false lashes. I don't wear them on my channel every day, but um, you know, if I'm doing something special or going out to a special event, I do like to wear false lashes. Number four, are there any makeup trends or styles that you used to dislike but now love or vice versa? Any that you used to love and now you don't care for anymore? I don't think there's anything I don't like anymore. I used to really enjoy contouring but now it's just not really a part of my routine. Other than that, I think pretty much just doing the same old, same old over here. <laughs> Number five, are there any beauty makeup trends that most people hate that you secretly, like, I don't really have anything. This is going to be boring, but all my answers are like, I don't have any trends that most people hate that I like. Sorry. Number six, are there any makeup rules or stereotypes that bother you? Uh, not really. Not really. I I feel like for the most part people are pretty good at, you know, doing their own thing. I do really hate the stereotype of like when people say like, oh that girl has too much makeup on. I think that's pretty annoying. Is that a stereotype or just like a like a thing? I don't really know what to call that, but that does bother me because I know people that'll be like, oh that girl, she oh, she's got so much makeup on. It's like, so what? Like if it makes somebody happy to wear a crap ton of makeup, so what? Like, it's not hurting anyone. Number seven, what old news makeup products do you still love and use on the regular? Old news makeup products, oh my gosh. Um, This is terrible because I really don't think there's any, I'm so good at like rotating through and using things that I feel like a lot of the stuff I use is new. Like, oh, what is an old, product that I still love to use. I don't know you guys. It's pretty terrible. I mean, I, I still love using MAC Fix Plus. Does that count? I think it's still one of the best setting spray, non-setting sprays I've ever used. Is it possible that there may be a specific YouTuber that inspired you to start a YouTube channel, but let's talk about what, if anything, YouTubers inspired you not to do? What 
YouTubers inspired you not to do? So what do I see other people doing that I don't want to do? Um, I think the one thing that I've thought a lot about recently is like cancel culture and a lot of like opinion channels. I don't actually, I don't know if there's a lot of opinion channels. There's one particular opinion channel um, that I know a lot of people in like the realm of YouTube I'm in watch and I find it kind of problematic only because it's like a lot of like bias involved so I know like this person I'm I'm trying to talk about it without naming names because I don't really feel like it's my like place to call somebody out but I watch their videos and I find it so problematic because a lot of her opinions are laced with her own personal bias and I mean everyone has that like I feel like nobody's really impartial and so there was a video recently I watched where um, they were talking about problematic YouTubers and then it's like who deserves a second chance versus who doesn't deserve a second chance and I like I, I like hate getting into that on YouTube because everyone has a different opinion and I feel like obviously if I was to sit here and talk about that on my channel, everyone that watches my channel that agrees with me would continue to, you know, support me and then people that don't agree with me would not, you know, support me and so I feel like it's kind of like you're fueling your own fire with like you think like you have these great points and you're you know calling people out but it's like I feel like all it's really doing is um, elevating people um, that shouldn't be elevated and I don't know it's weird right because it's like I don't know I feel like a lot of the time I'm watching this channel I'm like thinking of all the people that are like agreeing with this person and I'm like well I mean you're kind of like teaching people that in a way that they can like come on the internet and say whatever they want to and it's protected by like your opinion but also I kind of believe sometimes that if you don't have something good to say you just shouldn't say it because you're just gonna elevate the issue um in a in a negative way almost because it's like one person Talking about it to get more views isn't really changing the world. It's more so like getting your channel to be more famous, but surrounding yourself with more negativity. Whereas I feel like a more positive approach would be to create good content on your own and not use like other people's mistakes to propel your own channel. Does that make sense? So what I'm trying to say is like, I feel like a lot of opinion videos, they thrive on other people's mistakes instead of just them being good at what they do, which is either providing, you know, reviews or, um, or informational stuff on makeup. I feel like it's okay to have opinions, but I don't feel like necessarily making videos and videos and videos about it and kind of using other people's mistakes to propel yourself up is necessarily the best thing. I understand that drama channels are their own category, but they also kind of, they're there to like report. So I feel like it's interesting where you're not like gonna consider yourself a drama channel because maybe you still are a little bit of a beauty channel and then most of your content still involves talking about drama because that you've openly admitted on your channel that that helps your channel grow. I find that to be something that I personally don't want to do on my channel. And then the other thing there was, oh my gosh, that, um, does anybody remember, what's her name? Um, the beauty guru that hated all beauty gurus. Um, it was this little girl with the curly hair. Oh my god, I'm totally blanking on her. Um, but she was the one that made the video about like why PR is problematic and then she got PR and like the internet just like completely turned on her. Yeah, that was, that was a little interesting because I, yeah, <laughs> it was, hypocrisy is, whew, it does not get you anywhere in the beauty community, I must say. Number nine, what beauty content do you love creating the most? I love um, creating all content, to be honest. I love tags, I really do, it's so fun. I um, love putting together like talking videos. I love like listing things. I love the Will I Buy It videos, those are so fun to watch. I love swatch parties only because I, the reason I started doing swatch parties is because I feel like 
I have a hard time finding swatches on people with skin tones similar to mine. So the whole reason for me to do swatch party videos was so that people like me could watch my channel and find swatches and decide if the palette was going to work for them or not. So that's the reason why I start, started swatch parties and I, I really like them. So yeah, those are the things I enjoy filming on my channel. Number 10, is there any content that you create based on audience request or interest that you actually don't really like or prefer to create? Um, not particularly. I mean, uh, sometimes, hmm, I don't really have a lot of like Q&A videos and stuff like that because I feel like I don't have a big enough audience where I would get like an hour worth of questions, you know, to answer, but there's not really anything that anyone's asked me to make that... I've had a tough time making, if that makes sense, so. Number 11, how often do you film? I usually try to film as much as I can on the weekends. It's just easier for me to film. Um, so I try to crank out like two to three videos on the weekend. That way I have enough content to keep me going during the week. Um, number 12, do you have a job outside of YouTube? I sure do. Number 13, what beauty content do you enjoy consuming the most? I really love watching Will I Buy it videos. I love to watch hauls. Oh my gosh, I love makeup collections. I love good chatty videos. I love Angelica's fashion videos. I love Angelica in general. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I just love watching old school YouTube. I don't really get into a lot of get, get ready with me's unless they're like more chatty and less get ready with me. Um, but I enjoy filming those on my channel because I think it's a fun way for people to see palettes in use. So yeah, um, I also love seeing like when YouTubers get new collections that I'm anticipating buying. I love to see those types of videos so I know what to expect. And then number 14, any non-makeup channels you love? I really like Hot Limode. That's like one of the only non-makeup channels I'm subscribed to. I love his sassy, bitchy attitude, as he says, and I love his commentary on fashion. He's very like educated and yeah, I really enjoy that channel, I would recommend it to you guys if you guys are into fashion as well. Number 15, are there any mis makeup misconceptions because of YouTube or Instagram that you wish people knew the truth about or that you hope to change with your channel? I think obviously, I feel like I don't even need to say this because you'd think most people know this, but um, makeup only goes so far. Yes, it's great at enhancing beauty, but I always hope that people realize like a lot of the makeup on Instagram that looks flawless, that's like so, so redone and touched up and face tuned. And um, so one thing I've always done with my Instagram account and stuff is to really not filter or edit my video, my pictures. Uh, half of it is me just being lazy because I really just don't know how to do that. And the other half is just me uh, being appreciative of the fact that I am flawed as a human and I think that's okay. So that's definitely something I always try to, you know, make sure I am making people aware that you're, no matter how much makeup you put on, it's not going to make you look like a you know, magazine cover because magazine covers are edited by, you know, professionals and that's okay. I mean, you know, I wear makeup purely because I enjoy it and, you know, yeah, I feel a little bit extra um, put together when I wear makeup, but it definitely doesn't like define my whole person. If I were to lose all my makeup and somebody told me I couldn't wear makeup anymore, I would still be okay. Like, you know what I mean? Number 16. Have you ever, um, have you ever felt qualified or like bad beauty YouTuber because you didn't do things just like every other beauty guru? Um, no. <laughs> I think the only time I feel like a bad YouTuber is if I know I should film and I decide to do something else. There's definitely YouTube guilt. It's definitely a thing because, um, you know, it's like sometimes like even very recently, I'm like, oh, you know, my channel is not doing so great. I'm not getting like more than 100 views on videos these days and I was feeling really defeated and then just yesterday I uploaded a Will I Buy It video and I got so many sweet comments and like sometimes people just say the nicest things and you're like oh my gosh I gotta keep making videos just for that one person that left a nice comment telling me that I was their favorite YouTuber and I'm like how on earth is that even possible with all the YouTubers that are out there but 
yeah, people like that keep you going. It's kind of crazy. Number 17, if you could collaborate with a brand, which would it be? And what would you create? If I could collab with a brand, the first brand that just like came into my mind was Color Drain because I feel like they have the best quality eyeshadows that are just so, so good. I love that they're a uh, person of color owned, like they're well known. So I feel like, you know, my product could get into the hands of more people that look like me, which would make me happy. Another brand I would love to collab with would be ColourPop just because again, affordable price point and again, their reach, they're so globally well known, not just here in the United States, but even all over the world, they're so well known. So I think it would be so cool to work with a brand as big as ColourPop because I know that people um, from everywhere could enjoy my product. So I think that would be really, really cool. Okay, last question, number 19. Because your average booty guru doesn't always like to do this or give credit where credit is due, it's shout out time. Name three beauty content creators you think deserve more followers or recognition. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, so off the top of my head, I would say, oh my gosh, now I'm like scrolling through um, my um, subscription feed here. Okay, so I would say Amy Loves Makeup. Um, she is the one of the biggest advocates for indie makeup on YouTube that I have found, so I love her, and I think she deserves more subscribers because she's a young mom, and right now, I think YouTube could definitely help her and her family, so if you haven't checked out Amy Loves Makeup, I will uh, list her down below. I, um, okay, I'm trying to say anyone, like more people other than Angelica because she's like my go-to answer because I just love her channel so much. I do love Teresa is Dead. She is so funny and so on top of things when it comes to reviews. So if you wanna see really quick reviews, Teresa is Dead and then Hot Mess Ness MUA. Vanessa here on YouTube, again, another great advocate for indie makeup. She and Angelica have educated me so much on some of my favorite indie brands and um, she's also affiliated with a lot of um, indie brands so like Davina, Luxy, Sydney Grace. So if you ever want to see like new collections, she usually buys them and she also buys a lot of like um, mainstream stuff and she's got a really bougie like um, brush collection, I want to say. Don't get mad at me for saying that, Vanessa, but she's got some beautiful, like, Sonia G's and, like, Van Gogh's, so if you want, like, reviews on stuff like that, and she's just funny. I love her dry sense of humor. And then, honorable mention, um, Nisi Pisa, I think is how you say it. She's just funny. She, more than a beauty guru, I love, love watching her because she has a very, um, vast vocabulary so she uses some really interesting words i love her sense of humor um and yeah she's just interesting to listen to i feel like um she's always a good laugh when i watch her upload so i love her like new makeup release videos are always fun to watch so hopefully i answered all the questions and yeah thank you annette for letting me uh steal that video from you and i will go ahead and link annette's video down below as well as the creator of this tag I believe it was a girl named, let me look this up because I'm not sure. So the tag was created by Maria and I will go ahead and link her channel down below as well. So if you guys wanna create this, I will put the questions down in the description box. I haven't really seen a lot of people do this tag, so um, maybe more of you will do it and it'll be fun to watch. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys.